Let's do an antique sword unboxing. What's in the box with Lucy? Lucy, Lucy Easton <laughs> and Matt Easton. <laughs> Hi folks, so here is Matt Easton and Lucy Easton behind the massive box. So if you're new to the channel, this is something that we used to do a lot of. I'm still hiding Lucy behind the box there. This is something we used to do, uh, well, I won't say a lot of, well, but I mean, we we've definitely done it. Yes, but we used to do it years ago and basically we noted, we had, I had a load of boxes turn up today with stuff in and I can't remember exactly what's inside and I was like, this is a familiar situation. I remember years back, we probably like pre-COVID basically, we yeah. was probably the last one we did of these. Anyway, so um, without much further ado, uh, very briefly, what's inside these boxes? I've got two bo big boxes here, and inside is some antique stuff. Edged weaponry, probably. Um, it seems I, likely. But I can't remember what's inside here. For anyone who doesn't know, I run this channel, Scholar Gladiatoria. Uh, but I also am an antique dealer, so I'm buying antique weapons all the time and I sell them on my uh, website, Eastern Antique Arms, link below. Um, and uh, yeah, so I buy from auction, I buy from uh, how, you know, estate sales, deceased estates, uh, people selling off bits of their collection, all kinds of stuff. So I buy stuff that I think is interesting and I think someone might want to buy. And I can't always remember what's inside the boxes that are just turning up. So it's a surprise. So what do you think's inside the box? Do you think it's gonna be swords, guns, axes? Who knows? Get posting down below. Have some guesses if you know some specific models or patterns, guess some of those. Will any of those be in these boxes? I don't know. What do you think's in here, Lucy? I think one of them is a very exciting sword that you were very excited about. Exciting about. <laughs> it was so exciting about it. So Lucy is actually correct, but I already opened that one. <laughs> no! So, so there was a sword and there will be... You uh, were too excited. I was too excited. I had to open that. So there is a sword which is going to be featured. I'm actually writing an article about it because of who owned it, blah, blah, blah. That's not in this box. So hang on. So I actually don't know what's in these boxes. And I don't either because I've got a terrible memory. Could it I'm be Toa's? Uh, maybe... I don't know. Let's see. Let's get opening these boxes. And just before we get opening, Lucy, you hold that box. It's quite heavy. Uh, today we are using, we are sponsored by... <laughs> We're not. Kudu knives. Uh, so really cool traditional style of knife with modern materials, plastic handle, lock knives, obviously safer. Um, let's get opening this and see what's inside. It's a box within a box. It's a box within a box. And it's um, apparently oh, got a vacuum cleaner in it. And some bubble wrap. If you can hold that. Yep. Uh, obviously, don't try this at home. No, I mean, obviously you've got to use knives at home, haven't you? But, oh, right. Huh. We've isolated an object. So, you feel it? Tell me, what do you think it might be? Wakazashi. No, it's too heavy. No, so it's not. It's a police sword. Okay, so Lucy thinks not a Wakazashi, definitely a police sword. No, I don't think definitely. That's I, just my guess. I do actually know what this is. Am I totally wrong? So I'm going to unwrap it to a point where you might be able to guess. Oh. Can you guess yet? No. <laughs> You have Should seen... I be able to guess? Yeah. Should I be deeply ashamed of How long have we been together? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's two things in here. Right. Okay, look, I'm going to take that as the reason that I was confused. Right. Oh! There's a cork. But I assume there's a cork on there for a reason, but maybe not. Right, so, I guess some of you will recognise what this is by now. Do you know what this is called, Lucy? And there's something else at the other end. Ah, right, yes. I okay. think this might be three different things. No, it's, I believe it's two different things. But who knows? Because, you know, I just buy random stuff, apparently. Right. Oh. Okay, oh, they're taped together. That's really <laughs> annoying, but, you know, I guess that's- I'll a, hold the end. That's a good way to- <laughs> I actually remember now, the person that sent this to me said, how do I pack swords? And I said, take them together. <laughs> and here I am now making a video where I complain about the fact that they take them together. Right, 
This is actually a good way to transport swords if they don't have scabbards to keep the points safe. You tape them together. So, do you know what these two things are? Is Clue. that one a bayonet? It is. They're both French. Um, so on one side here, we've got what's called a, a choup chou, I believe in French, a cabbage chopper, which is a like a gladius. It's an uh, artilleryman's sidearm. And on the other side, we have a French chaspeau yet again bayonet, model 1866. So what the other thing was called again? Which one? Shoop shoe. A cabbage, just call it a cabbage chopper. I genuinely did not know that name or that thing. Oh, right. So I wouldn't have oh, guessed yeah. it. I have seen one before. You do see, they're not uncommon but... because obviously the French army had lots of them in the artillery. Yeah. And they were originally used, the first versions were used in the time of Napoleon, very topical for the film that's coming out. This has been sharpened multiple times. So they were predominantly used for cutting up fascines and um, you know wooden stakes, basically used as a tool predominantly, but you could use it as a weapon as well. This one has been hammered on the back for various reasons. So it's really had a hard life and you can see the remains of some writing there, mm. which would be the date uh, and the maker. I think it's probably Chateau Leroux, which is one of the French arms factories. So there we go. It's like a Gladius, it's modeled on a Gladius, originally came about in Napoleon's time and then stayed with the French army all the way through the 19th century. They had a couple of different versions. Of it's them. also surprisingly heavy. They're really it heavy. It feels very it, weighted it, towards the handle. It's more of a tool than a weapon, really. And this is an incredibly common uh, French 1866 Chasbeau banner. These are not things, generally speaking, that I buy, but... Um, but you do. Well, because they came as a job lot. So often in the antiques world, what happens is you, there are certain things you want, and but they come as one group, uh, and so you have to buy the whole group. Uh, so there we go. French cabbage chopper. Maybe that will feature in future videos. And a chasper bayonet probably won't feature in future videos because I've got I've had loads of them over the years. In fact, it was one of the the first bayonets I added to my collection when I was a young bayonet collector. Three about more age, swords. Age sixteen. Four more swords. Yeah. It was well, six things. Actually, if there are things taped to other things, it could be oh more than that, goodness. couldn't it? It's exciting times. <coughs> so. Yep, yeah, this is a sword taped to another sword, I believe. Oh, wow. Who knows? Uh, the sound effects with all this bubble wrap must be absolutely fascinating to you. Um, Everything is surprisingly heavy today. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> just having a weak day. Getting really, really weak. Getting very yeah. old. So here we have two swords taped to each other. Uh, can you see, can you guess what they might be? Lucy? Feel my presence. It's, one it's a like cutlass. Christmas, isn't it, where you're trying to... It's one a cutlass and one a tolwa. So you think a cutlass and a tolwa. Well, what makes you think this is a tolwa? The disc at the end. Yeah, so Lucy's bang on the money there. This one's definitely a tolva. Let's get the... That's not a cutlass. <laughs> what is it? Let's see the tolva first. You like a tolva, don't you? Yes. That is a... Ooh. Oh, mind your fingers. Oh! Oh, it looks like they're both going to oh, come out really together. Oh, they really are taped. They are fully taped together, so there's no... Uh, Getting these out separately. Oh, maybe there is. No. <clears throat> More cutting. Whoa. <laughs> See, it's tiring, isn't it's it? Hot. It's hot. It's hot work. It's a hard life unwrapping swords. Ah, it's not what I thought it was. So, it's definitely not what I thought it was. <laughs> Actually, technically, you were pretty much on the money with your first guess. Cutlass? But the hell's all sorts, wrong. Of sorts. So, what we have here, taped together, is on one side an Indian talwa with double fullers. A uh, European imported blade. Oh no, maybe not. Difficult. We'll have a look in a minute. So Tolwa on that side, and on that side, a artillery hanger or mountain artillery sword. Not sure which. Let's have a look. Let's get these detached from each other. It's quite good there being two in each packet, actually, because that means we each get one to hold. Well, we talk about the other one. 
I'll hold the tulwar. Lucy does like a tulwar. Basically, you like all Indian weapons, don't yes. you? Yes. Katars, tulwars. That's very sticky. All of that kind of Can I peel off the jazz. tape? Oh, that's quite nice. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> People are going to be making jokes about you stealing my <laughs> my tolwas and katars. And, I, I have and already stolen again. all of them. <laughs> well, not all of them. He has a lot. Ah, right. So let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this. No, let's talk about this first. <gasps> no. Um, okay, get it out of the way. Still got tape on it. So this is the blade. You'll notice is kind of like a 1796 like cavalry saber. And the hilt has a cast iron grip like on a cutlass. So Lucy was exactly right. The grip is like a cutlass, but with a brass knuckle bow. So I think this is a Napoleonic... Um, I think, or it could be... Uh, it could be a bit later than that. Um, maybe early Victorian. Um, uh, artillery um, sidearm. However, there were various other swords that were made to this pattern with the cast iron grip ribbed. Um, for your pleasure, brass guard and a 1796 style blade. Sometimes these were carried by Indian cavalry, sometimes they were carried by Coast Guard, apparently, allegedly. So they were given to all sorts of people. Um, so I'll need to clean up and see if there are any markings on this, because I can't see any. If you've got a GR marking, that means George. If you've got a VR marking, marking that means uh, Victoria. So it'll be late Georgian or early Victorian probably. Is your indecision about the timing based on the fact that they consistently made the same style for a long time? They basically just kept giving them to different people, yeah. So if they it kept, ain't broke. Well yeah, so they kept, it's a very robust, very strong type of sabre and they just kept making them and issuing them to completely different types of, of troops. But I can't see any markings on this one that might give me some clues, but it does need a bit of a clean. Anyway, a cool sword, a bit like a 1796 like cavalry sabre, but actually kind of stronger because you've got a cast iron grip. And have a feel of that. It's got quite a nice balance to it. Oh. Because it's quite back weighted because it's got an iron grip. So you like it now, don't you? <laughs> Give it back. Right, let's have a look at this tulwar. So am I correct in saying that this is slightly longer I haven't than normal? It yet. <laughs> yeah, it does look From it, a yeah. distance. Yeah. Oh, took it away. So initially I thought the form of this blade might be European. However, the edge bevel looks very Indian, but also we've got something here, which is sometimes known as the um, Indian Ricasso, which is completely Indian. So th I don't think this is a European blade. I think this is an Indian blade, and I think it's not a particularly high quality hilt. It's quite a basic hilt, but it's a good quality blade, and it's all solid. Oh, my hand fits really well in it, actually. So. That's nice, isn't it? That is a big blade, and that's got a good edge still on it. I mean, it's had some, some chips Someone's been it, playing but, with it. It's, um, well, or yeah, it's been used. Um, in fairness, India is somewhere that they were still using swords very actively, even up until the early, well, in the middle of the 20th century, actually. Um, but yeah. Can I have nice. the back, please? Yeah, you can hold the tolwa for the rest of the time on this video. Right, let's have a look at the next parcel. So here's the next packet of swords, I think. Thing. Is it two again? I think it's probably a pair of swords. It's big at both ends, so. <laughs> Let's get cutting. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure this is just one item. So without unwrapping it any further, can you guys, I'll give you a bit more of a clue. Can you guess what that is? You might know if you know your models of sword and maybe the curvature. Can you guess, Lucy, without unwrapping it anymore? Feel the shape of the guard. I don't know. Uh, infantry officer's sword. A the light cavalry that. sword. Yes! <laughs> there we go. Process the odds were in my favour. Process guess. of elimination. Oh, no, it is. It is in awful, Ooh. awful condition. Um, yeah, with... Oh, it's just, so the hilt's been apart. So this is really what you call a relic sword. So this is a 1796 light cavalry sabre. All of the parts are there, but it, someone has horribly messed around with the hilt. Uh, it's had a replacement grip put in like this. This is really, you know, this is the nature of the antiques business is you, you, you get stuff which you wouldn't buy individually, but it's part of the group and there are things in there that you want. 
Now, funnily enough, the oh, blade... That's not bad. The blade's fine. So it's a 1796 like Cavalry Sabre blade. It's got the scabbard for it, which is obviously original to it, and it fits. It's got all of the parts. The langets are both still attached here. Uh, but the grip obviously perished and someone's tried to replace it, but just done a terrible, terrible job. So this would go on my website in the, uh, you know, economy restoration section uh, for a budget buy uh, if you want a Project 1796 like Cavalry Saver. Or um, if you want to buy it directly from me, then uh, send me an email and I won't have to um, stick it on the website. But, um, you know, it's an interesting thing that was probably carried in the Napoleonic Wars. So it is a part, you know, it's a piece of history. It's just really suffered quite badly so uh, someone that that'd be a nice project for someone maybe an entry level sword right let's see what's in the next parcel so this one seems to be fairly short and i'm not sure what's inside do you here. think it's one sword or two i think this is one that is do you a... want to have a go oh that is an infantry officer's sword it's too short no it's it it's got the feel I'm that to think oh i remember what this is I think I remember what this is. Is yes. it a police sword? It's not a police sword, but it is the right kind of I size. Think, I think it's... So you notice this is shorter. It's got a wide guard. So this is... So what would a short sabre be known as? Oh no, that's a test I shouldn't be failing. What is a... like a cutlass, but if it's for people on land, you often refer to it as a... Land cutlass. <laughs> Uh, a hanger. A hanger, <laughs> yay. So there we go. So uh, generally, oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's Is not, it an infantry officer's sword? It's not at all what I thought it was. This anyway. is brilliant. Open it up. Maybe there's... Yes, there's some more length hidden in there in bubble wrap. That is not at all what I was expecting to come out of there. There we go. So do you know what... That's a naval officer's sword. There we go, Lucy got it. So, if you've got a lion pommel, it doesn't always mean that actually, but if you've got a lion pommel on a Victorian sword, it means it's a naval officer's sword. What, what else sword. can it be with a lion? I thought it was always a naval officer's sword. Oh, and it's got a scabbard as well. I don't really remember this. I think it's nice. Gavin would like it. <laughs> We don't talk about Gavin when it, it, Gavin isn't here. When it's not a Gavin video. <laughs> it's not a Gavin video, it's a Lucy video today. <laughs> you can only have one friend at a time. But there will be another Gavin video coming soon. Right. So you didn't tell me what other types of swords can have a lion, please. Oh, oh, it's the end of the scabbard in there, it probably is. Oh. That's often the way. So often uh, naval swords, the, uh, the leather breaks off. Um, it's very, very common. We'll never know that what other swords have a lion. Sorry, uh, some other swords do have a lion on the pommel. So Which an 1803 ones? infantry officer's sword, for example, has a lion pommel. But in the Victorian period, it is mostly naval swords that have lion pommels. Now, have a look at the... While I'm just trying to find the end of the scabbard, have a look at the emblem on the blade and the um, guard okay. and tell the viewers about it. So um, normally, on... what, normally what do Victorian swords have etched on the blades and on the guards? VR. VR? And what does, what does VR stand Victoria for? Victoria Regina. There we go. It's Queen Victoria. But instead, this has got an anchor with, oh, what, what I optimistic... What did you call me? <laughs> I really, for a split second, optimistically thought that there was a snake going around that anchor, but it's not, it's just the rope that pulls the anchor up. There's the um, the... And there's a little lion. So I'm going to show that on camera. So this sword, I remember this now, is a bit different from a normal Victorian naval officer's sword because if we look at the guard here, there we go. You can see there, there is a lion holding a crown. Okay, now if we come to the blade, let's see if we can get that to show up. Uh, where is it? Here. There is another lion holding a crown. So that is the sign of the East India Company. So this is rarer than a typical Victorian naval officer's sword. This is specifically for a um for an officer it's made by widowson 
of Strand, London. Um, so this is specifically for an officer who is in the East India Company's Navy rather than the British Royal Navy. Now that was later remerged, uh, well, not remerged, but merged rather um, after the Indian Mutiny. But um, but at this point they were separate entities. So the East India Company had their own army, um, which became the Indian Army under British rule. Um, and they had their own navy, which was the East India Company Navy. So this is a a British officer's uh, sword for someone in the um, in the East India Company Navy. And were they so always that thing. short? Uh, so naval officer reset? swords are usually shorter than infantry officers. Yeah, so they're often 29, 30 inch blades instead of 32, 33 inch blades. And um, oh, you found your end. Yeah, I found my end. Fantastic. Um, but as mentioned, unfortunately, with these leather scabbards, they often uh, perish. Um, because the, the water kind of gathers around here and it rots the leather, unfortunately, or sometimes even oil if people have, pe people have oiled the blades. You can get that restored, but I'd leave that for someone else to do. So there we go, a cool, and we've got the folding drop section, but it doesn't have a locking pin on this because it's quite uh, an early one, probably dates to about 18, between 1846, when this model of blade came in, 1846 and 1857, or 58, when, um, essentially that the East India Company Navy got merged with the Royal Navy, I believe, or thereabouts. Right, so that was an interesting sword. <laughs> now, uh, for this batch, we've only got this packet left. Let's see what's inside. Is it going to be two swords? One halberd. This has got to be two swords, I think. I tried to buy a halberd not long ago, actually, but it wasn't But successful. do you know what you didn't try and buy? A swivel gun. <laughs> That's an in-joke for anyone, for <laughs> anyone who's sorry. wondering why on earth is Lucy suddenly talking about swivel guns. So we were at, uh, Lucy came to me with me to an antique fair not that long ago and tried very hard to get me to buy a swivel gun. And he uh, wouldn't. A swivel gun is what it sounds like. It is a, it's a cannon that swivels. It's mounted on a swivel for mounting on the side of a ship for repelling borders. It's a small cannon, basically. Um, and they look really, really cool. Could you hold that end while I cut this? Yes. <laughs> this is one that you have. <laughs> it doesn't narrow it down. Right. Oh. Don't give away anything. <laughs> Okie dokie, right. So this is two swords attached end to end. The kudu is pretty good, incidentally. I think that was purchased from maybe Heine Haynes. Very good, uh, nice sellers, incidentally. Is a kudu a bird? Uh, I think. I think a kudu is a bird. I think so, but a kudu on there is an antelope. No, so maybe I think it... it's a bird. Ah, right, oh, look at this. So, Ooh. can you guess, oh, we've gone off camera, what that is? Can you see? I think some of you will know exactly what that is. Lucy can see from this side. Or what that oh, it's broken. is. Yes, it is broken. I did know that. I remember it now. So let's do this one first. Da, 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 the big reveal. There we go. Can you tell what that is? Do you know what that is, Lucy? Um, it's a familiar shape, but I don't know what it's called. So going back to the last line of questioning, when the sword was not the sword that I thought it was. Is that the sword you thought? It's a hanger! It's a hanger! So a, this is a type of hanger. They're attached there. Loosely referred to as an 1851 pattern, although it's not technically a pattern at this date, I don't think. But they were often carried by infantry in Britain. So it's a British infantry hanger. Obviously it's got tape stuck to it. It's a British infantry hanger, a short sword of a type that was um, worn. In fact, this type was worn by various types of infantry all over Europe, not just the Brits, but the French had their version, the Prussians, the Austrians. They all had slightly different versions of them. But in the days when of the, the age of muskets and bayonets. Um, so obviously you know that plug bayonets came along in the 17th century, they were replaced by socket bayonets. But in the 18th century, so the 1700s, a lot of militaries still didn't fully trust uh, the bayonet. Um, 
And so they still equip their infantry with short swords, with hangers like this. Um, and so this is the 1751 uh, model, uh, if we call it that, British infantry hanger. So they would have had a musket, a bayonet and a hanger. Now, by the Napoleonic period, most people had stopped issuing hangers to their, to their infantry because they were seen as superfluous to need. They never really got used for anything except maybe for chopping firewood. Um, Although artillery still had hangers as we saw earlier, so artillery still used them for making emplacements, gun emplacements and, and cutting down branches so they could get a cleaner line of fire and things like this. But infantry, they were seen as superfluous. This one, unfortunately, has got a broken branch on the guard, probably something that happened quite often. It's been like that for a long time, looking at the patina. What do you think about that, Lucy? I think it's very nice. Can we look at the other one? In a minute, in a minute. That's the one I was most exciting <laughs> about. Uh, you hold this and hold this and tell the viewers something about it. Uh, it's loose it's and jangly broken. and loose. Yeah, and it's got a broken <laughs> bit. So it's a bit of a relic condition. It's got some interesting markings on it. Um, sometimes these have regimental markings on the hilt, but this one doesn't. Um, but there we go. It is what it is. It's an 18th century uh, infantryman's sidearm. Right. To the final sword. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my sweet. <sighs> Oh, that is interesting. That's, that's weird, isn't it? It looks like a repair. Yeah, it does. Right, so, Lucy, what is this humongous thing? Let's zoom out a bit so we can get... Oh, there we go. So... Get it all into shot. It's Indian, right? Yes. It's not a tall one because it's too big and the guard is different. Which means it's a... big. Oh, now we have to wait for half an hour whilst the word comes to me. <laughs> so this type of... Give me the first letter. This type of hilt is generically referred to... Give me the to, first letter. This type of hilt is generically referred to as a bar. If it was a European sword. Give me the first letter of what it's called. F. <laughs> that doesn't help me. <laughs> it, it's technically... The second letter. I. Fear. Oh no, I don't know then. So, a lot of people would call this a Ferengi. Oh! Were you thinking of a Kanda? Yeah. Right, okay, so this isn't really a Kanda because it doesn't have a Kanda once, shaped once blade. Once you said F, I was, I was screwed. So was this is a humongous that. blade. I remember seeing photos of this and I had no idea how big it was. Can I hold it? Yeah, yeah, in a second. This is, I'm just trying to get the tape off so it looks a bit better on camera. And this is really big. My gosh. Can I hold it? You can hold it. Oh, it's too small for your hand. That means it's for me. No, it fits me okay, Yay! actually. It's, that is really big. Oh, that's interesting. So it's got a delamination yeah, in the blade. Yeah, it has. In, it's got, so it's got a delamination in the back of the blade where it's been yeah. forged. And, and, and a, a bit repair of a, a, a with, weld or with, something. Yeah, with um, a, like a brazed weld. Yeah. But it's a humongous great blade. Very, very flexible. No, don't we? Look at very, it. very it's, flexible. It's, it's oh, okay. snapping. No, that's an old. It's that, got writing on old. it. So, so this is sometimes referred to in British sources as a Hindu basket hilt. It just means an Indian basket hilt from India was often referred to in British sources in the 19th century as Hindustan. Uh, which is obviously a slightly made up and weird term, but there we go, India. So it's an Indian basket hilt. And this type of hilt can be found on numerous different blades, in, including Susan Pata, um, curved like Talwab type blades. Um, it can be found on Kanda, various type Pati, so various types of, various types of uh, Indian sword can have a basket hilt. So the basket hilt in itself doesn't define the type of sword. Now often people that see a straight pointed blade mounted on a basket hilt refer to it generically as a Frangi. Now this actually comes from Persian Farsi for the word for Frankish meaning European. And many of the blades on this type of sword are European imports. So in the 17th century, Lucknow had thousands of German blades in the arsenal and they're recorded there. And these German blades were often fitted to Indian hilts. So you can find German sabre blades, you can find German broadsword, backsword blades. But that's not European blade. So no, and how do you know that? Because I've seen a lot of blades, I, I, it just doesn't look. So in many ways, this could look like a European blade. However, it has forging flaws in it. It has a delamination in the back of the spine where it has a little uh, thin filler up the back as we find on certain Ottoman swords as well. And the fact that it has that delamination 
probably means that it's traditionally forged um, in a way that they weren't doing very much in Europe by this time, unless it's a much older blade than, than I would think. However, there is one big, big clue that suggests that this is a... Well, that could have been done afterwards. I that don't, it yeah, could have been it could have been but i don't think so because you have to cut into the steel to do it um so okay so what we're talking about here yeah. my assumption is, is that that could have been done writing that is gold inlay cover into faces the blade. to let it focus okay so it's okay i can do it so <laughs> so because that has been cut into the blade with a chisel and hammered in with gold that probably means i mean i need to get that translated but that is probably that means yeah it is that's, I that was rust. that's why this is all black patina on the steel, but that is still bright, bright yellow. That is gold. So you don't have one of these, do you? Uh, or do you? Yeah, I don't I've got do. swords. I do have swords similar to this, but Not anyway. With this kind of blade. What, what I was talking about the delamination. Let's have a look at the delam here. So the delam is actually in the spine here, and it goes through to the side, and that is filled with brass, and the brass is tarnished. So that's the difference between brass with patina compared to gold with no patina, because of course gold doesn't get patina. So a very, very interesting sword, a massive blade, super sharp. Look how, look how fine that blade is. And Tiny it's, even got, it's even got edge contact damage yeah. as well. Humongous sword, probably brought back to Britain as a war trophy in, um, who knows, the Maratha Wars, Sikh Wars, who knows. Um, but I'll try and get that translated. It looks like, Farsi to me. It looks like Persian. Um, so I'll get that. I've actually got some Iranian friends and I've got some other friends who can probably read that. So I'll send that to them. And um, what an interesting sword and an interesting haul. Right. Finally, to finish off, I have another box which I know has two swords in it. So let's open that box and finish this off. So here's the second box. It's a long one. And it's you wrapped want... like an Egyptian mummy. Did you want to do this bit, Luce? No, I'm happy. Um... Are you really? Are you really happy? Are you You're surrounded by swords and bubble wrap. Yes. I mean, I know I'm happy when I'm surrounded <laughs> by swords and bubble wrap, but I don't really know if Lucy is. There are worse ways to spend an evening, aren't there? Yes. And of course, we have to share it with you guys. Oh, right. So, do you know what these two are? I do. You hold that one. It is a 1796. You hold that one. Is that a thing? That's a thing, right? It is a thing, yeah. yeah. That, that would be a spadroon of, of that shape, anyway. But is that what it is? That's the question. So, let's. this has got masking tape on it, so hopefully we'll be able to tear this without having to use the knife. Nope, I was wrong. Get the knife. Oh, I'm more interested by this. We'll get to that. Be patient. <laughs> right. Is it a small sword? So, here's the first one. So I guess most of you can guess that's the sabre, but which sabre? Da, da, da. There we go, Lucy. Can I hold it? Yep, let's put that one. It's quite light, isn't it's it? A, I was going to say light cavalry. It's a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> Tear it. Ha ha, it's a thing you have things of. It's a thing I have things <laughs> of, apparently. So it is a sabre. Do you know what this is? Um, some of you will be shouting at the screen and you will know what it is. So that is a so-called scroll hilt and it is in steel. So that's a steel scroll hilt. It's the first thing we know. It's a stepped pommel, not a checkered pommel. It has a thumb placer checkered here. It's not checkered all the way up. So it's pre-1895. So all the pieces of the jigsaw coming together. Let's have a look at the blade. Oh, look, oh. it's a straight blade. If you could just hold the scabbard, Lucy. It's a straight blade with a double fuller, which is a, in Victorian terminology, a claymore blade. So if it's a Scottish blade on a steel scroll hilt, sc um, scroll hilt that probably means this is an officer's sword from Scotland. Oh, yeah. I thought you wanted me to say the year, which so, is just never going to happen accurately. So it is a Scottish, oh, it's been service sharpened, interestingly. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. So that has been taken somewhere interesting. So it is a pre-1895, probably dates to the 1880s through up to, up to 1895. It's been hanging on somebody's it wall. It is made by Thurkel. 
Uh, oh, it says E. Thurkel on the other side, but I recognise the proof disc. So it's made by Edward Thurkel, probably in the 1880s uh, and or early 1890s. Been server sharpened, so who knows where it's gone, maybe the Boer War. And that would have been carried by a Highland field officer, so it's a field officer's sword, of uh, so a field rank that is major or above. So a major, lieutenant colonel, or colonel, or general potentially but probably a major it's got um, a nice blade so there we go yes you have all that it's nice i think you'll like that i do like that yeah nice nimble sword That's great guard great very blade. well weighted good for thrusting lighter than normal not the best cutting blade but good for thrusting nice and light it's nice and quick. for cutting and i think most people that do hema saber fencing would like this sword it I feels like good in the hand sword. this incidentally has been covered with i recognize this as varnish don't worry the fact that I'm touching the blade because obviously these will all get cleaned up. Um, that's covered with old varnish that's gone yellowy, but that will polish right up and I can see the nickel plating is preserved underneath. So that will clean up really, really well. So that's a good find. Let's see what's in the final package of bubble wrap. So Lucy's feeling the final packet. Lucy, what do you think's in there? It's really, really light and the blade feels really thin. So I so, feel like it's a small sword. Okay, so you're thinking a sword which is really thin and really light of about that size, probably a small sword. Do you want to have a look? Am I super wrong? Careful. Don't just, cut, don't just cut, cut the sword, sword. Part. <laughs> We all know that only katanas can do that. <laughs> What's it going to be? <gasps> Was Lucy correct? Show the camera. Dun, 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 dun. Lucy was correct. <laughs> it is a small sword with a very pointy blade, a quite, quite a short blade. That's but a it, lovely triangle blade. But it is very, very stiff and very pointy. It looks short, a lot shorter than average. It looks, I think that's maybe been reshaped it although been, it's but quite thin it, yeah it looks it looks correct at the end if it has mm. been shortened it's been shortened a long time Can ago I hold it? yeah i'll just quickly show the camera so it's <gasps> a steel it's a steel hilt a uh, fairly fairly standard guard nothing particularly exciting um, interestingly the grip is made of alternating iron and copper wires um, and that will clean up and be obviously a lot brighter the fact that the um guard the pommel and the dish are all black may mean this is what's referred to as a morning sword that is a sword you wear when in mourning so it's unadorned. Not, not in the morning no it's very plain it's a somber essentially um, so it could be in fact i think it probably is a morning sword that might also be why it's shorter than average as well because you don't need a full length one um, so it's more of a dress item than necessarily one you intend to use but could be used nevertheless as worn by a morning gecko yeah do you like really it small. <laughs> do you like it yeah ish it's fine <laughs> ish i'm not overly one, a small one thing sword to, person one thing to note about the small sword uh, finger rings here is they are not literally for putting the finger through you just gently place the finger what if you had a really like small that. finger <laughs> well, yeah, a tiny, a small a child, tiny child, a small child could perhaps put their finger through, but by and large, it's put your finger on. So there we go. What's um, your favourite thing? Uh, a big old haul. I don't know, really. I'm not sure. Guess um, what my favourite thing is? I I'm guessing the massive Indian sword or that toll bar. Number one. The basket hilt. Number two. So surprise, surprise, <laughs> Lucy likes Indian swords the best. Um, I don't i actually think i don't know i don't know i'm interested to get that script is translated. your favorite one the navel sword no really no oh no well um, that, that i'm mean, quite decisively no. i don't know which which my favorite is maybe the tolwa um but anyway do you see too many swords to have a favorite <laughs> no my favorite arrived earlier today and okay. i and i opened that off camera <laughs> i'm afraid but there will be content coming about that and an article as well because it is a very interesting sword and a very interesting person who it belonged to and I'm very chuffed to have got Ooh. hold of it anyway thanks a lot for watching thanks to Lucy for joining me for this video um, if you would like us to unbox other things <laughs> then send them no um, so if, if this has been fun then uh, we'll do some more in the future when we get some other boxes of stuff but um, I'm sorry it's been so long since Lucy was on the channel great to have you back <laughs> thanks for coming hope to see you again soon 
Thanks for watching. Give us a like, share us around, and uh, we'll see you back on the channel really soon. Cheers, folks. I just remembered what I'm unboxing on Friday. A snake. And that's a whole different channel. <laughs>